All right, guys, welcome to polynomial functions. And this is a introduction to polynomial functions and a couple things we need to, to look over. You've already watched some videos on what a polynomial is and, and how to add or subtract, but um, these, this is a little bit different video talking about um, the, more of the graphical aspect of a polynomial. Two things you got to understand. Uh, the shape and end behavior of a graph is determined by the degree and by the sign of the leading coefficient. So what that means is the power and the value on your leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is on the term that has the highest power. You can determine the degree of any polynomial by using differences. And that's going to come in the last example from a table. Please know that polynomials are continuous and the domain is all real numbers for any polynomial. We're not talking range, just the domain is all real numbers. All right, some common polynomials. So I listed from degree, the name, and an example. Common polynomials from degree 0 to 5. Degree 0 is a constant. Degree 1 is linear. Degree 2 is quadratic. Degree 3 is cubic. De degree 4 is quartic. And degree 5 is quintic. And notice, just because it's a fifth degree doesn't mean I have to have five terms or four a degree four, four terms, I just gave you some examples. Leading coefficient like a cubic, 4x cubed minus 2x squared minus 7. A quadratic, 4x squared. So these are some common polynomials, and these are really about how much we're going to work with. They're just these five, degree five, and, and, and probably no more than degree five. Okay, a so couple things. Turning points, okay? The turning points of a graph are where the graph changes direction. You'll, you'll look at when you, later on, you'll learn about concavity, okay? Or near our relative maxes or mins. Okay, so it's where the graph changes direction. And if you think about a quadratic, the first time we saw that was at the vertex, right? Where the parabola changes direction. So that's kind of what you're looking for, what you're going to see with a turning point. Uh, it's determined or affected by the degree of the polynomial. So the number of turning points is affected by the degree of the polynomial. Polynomials of degree n have, uh, has at most n minus 1 turning points. So for example, if you have a cubic function, okay, the most turning points it can have is 2. Okay, it could have one turning point, but at most it's going to have two turning points. n behavior. Uh, there are four cases of end behavior, and, and when we talk about the essential understanding, it's the direction of which the graph move, looks from left to right. So you're looking at what's happening at the ends. Not in the middle, you don't really care, but what's happening at the ends. When I look when A or X approaches infinity and when X approaches negative infinity, there's four cases. Okay? Uh, the easiest case is when your leading coefficient is positive and the degree is even. Okay, like a quadratic with, you know, x or a equal 1. So when a is greater than 0, positive, and n is even, when those two things are true, you have an up, up. Okay? And you can signify that with two arrows going up, or you can just say up, up. But that is a n behavior that's up, up. Okay? Now, opposite of that is down, down. When just the only thing that changes is a becomes less than 0, you still have an even degree. But a is less than 0, so you have down, down. Now, the thing you have to realize about when your degree is even, the end behaviors are always going to go in the same direction, whether they're both up or both down. That's key. When you have odd degrees, the end behaviors have to be in opposite directions. So here, the first one is in red. We have down, up, down, up, and that's when a is greater than 0 and n is odd. So the red graph here is this first section. I ran out of room, so I put two graphs on one here. The green function is up, down. That's when a is less than 0 and n is odd. Okay, So those are the four cases. And let's look at an example of how to determine n behavior. Okay, So what is the n behavior of each function? Well, here's my first one, negative 4x cubed plus 2x squared plus 7. I only care about the leading coefficient. Okay, this is in standard form. It's a cubic trinomial. Cubic. Degree is odd, so the end behaviors have to be opposite directions. I know that. But a is less than 0, and the degree is odd, so that's up, down, or up, down, there. So that's the end behavior. 
if you had a calculator, you could just plug this into your Y1 and see the end behavior, okay? But without a calculator, you have to, to know what they, they behave like by looking at the leading coefficient and the degree. The second one's much easier. All I do is negative 2x to the fourth. Who cares about the rest? I don't care. Degree 3, 2. This is a degree 4. So I know that my end behavior has to be the same direction. A is less than 0. It's negative. So that means the end behavior is down, down. Okay? So that's how to find end behavior looking at, a, looking at an equation. Last example here. What is the degree of the polynomial? This is what we mean by finite differences. Okay? I've got a table of values, and I need to find the, the end behavior. Maybe I don't have a graphing calculator. Okay? We know we can find the degree by looking at the differences of the y coordinates. Okay, so here's my table. In blue, I have rewritten my y coordinates. Notice I haven't taken any differences yet, so that doesn't count as the first difference. So, what we have to do is take the differences between the y coordinates. And what we do is subtract the term above from the term below. So, negative 7 minus negative 1 becomes negative 6. And then I go to the second two numbers, negative 3 and negative 7. Okay, you always subtract the top number from the bottom. Negative 3 minus negative 7 is 4. Again, 3 and 5. 5 minus negative 3 is 8. We go down to 5 and 11. 11 minus 5 is 6. We go down to the next 2. 9 minus 11 is negative 2. And the last 2, negative 7 minus 9 is negative 16. Now, since these differences are not constant, we know that this is not linear. So I took the first difference, and I don't have constants as the answers, so this is not linear. i got to go again. So in black here, this is the second difference. So again, top from the bottom, 4 minus negative 6 is 10. 8 minus 4 is 4. 6 minus 8 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. Negative 16 minus negative 2 is negative 14. Again, none of those differences are the same. They're not all the same number. This is not a second degree polynomial. I have to take the differences again. So in green, I have the differences. 4 minus 10, negative 6. Negative 2 minus 4, negative 6. And you can see that now all my differences are the same on the third difference. So this would be a third degree polynomial. And that's how you use finite differences from a table to know what the polynomial's degree is going to be. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can type them below. You can also email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov, and we'll see you next time.